Yeah, welcome back, and I hope you're having a good week. Today we're going to be talking about risk, and I'm not talking about the slip trip type hazard risk. I'm talking about investment risk. And do we as humans really understand risk? Now this one's going to be an eye-opener for many. Remember, if you like the content that we're putting out, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. If there is any particular type of content you would like us to cover, then please leave a comment below or contact us direct. Now let's get into it. When we talk about risk in relation to investing, everyone always seems to panic. The risk when investing debate is up there with the passive versus active debate. Now that's a one for another time. Now this is a huge misconception of what risk is. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you should view risk when investing. And this will change your whole perception on risk and make you understand that actually cash in the bank or under the bed is the riskiest way to store your money. In this video, I'm gonna use a good friend of ours, Andy Hart of Maven Money and Humans Under Management Conferences informed and uninformed risk matrix. It's something that we've used with clients for some time and is a real game changer. So here we go. So Warren Buffett says, risk is not knowing what you're doing, which is very true. So I like to split risk up to what I call uninformed and informed risk. Now, what you see on screen now is something that um, a good friend of ours in the profession, Andy Hart of uh, Maven Advisor and Humans Under Management has, has come up with. And it's a, it's a great model for explaining to clients what risk really is. So it's split into uninformed and informed risk. So the uninformed risk is what I would kind of say is how risk is perceived in the UK by what we hear in the press and what we've kind of been taught about what risk is. And that effectively is on a scale of one to 10. Okay, we're one being cash deposits. So that being the most, the least risky of a way to invest. Then you've got government bonds, corporate bonds, physical property, commodities, what's new, global equities, emerging markets, equity funds, small cap and large cap shares. Now, that's how it's perceived to be. So what we perceive is actually cash is the least riskiest, then government bonds, which is loans to the government, corporate bonds, which is loans to big corporate companies, yeah, and they'll pay a return on that. Physical property is, is a house, bricks and mortar, which you might own or might be rental properties, commodities, alternatives, commodities, sort of like gas, um, oil, water, etc. What's new? This is your cryptos and your NFTs you're hearing all about at the moment. And then the next one, the great companies of the world. Okay, and we'll come back to that in a bit more detail later. Emerging markets, which is emerging companies in the world, and then single cap and large cap shares. That's actually owning kind of individual shares of companies, yeah. So that's the higher end of risk, which I'd probably agree with anyway on that. But actually, if we really learn a bit more about risk and what it actually is, and we then call that informed risk, and this scale, again, is on a 1 to 10, but it's been flipped around a little bit, and actually... As you can see in the blue, orange, and red, we're talking about volatility, inflation, and loss of capital. Now, they're big things to be taken into account. We'll come onto those in a bit more detail now. Okay. But if you turn risk on its head and actually really understand what risk is, by investing in the great companies of the world, or global equities call, is actually one of the least riskiest things to do. Okay. Then physical property. So that's buying a house, bricks and mortar, because it's tangible, you can see it. Emerging markets, the, the growing companies in the world. Then, as we're going up the scale, then we've got commodities, corporate bonds, government bonds, and cash. Now, these seem to be coming a bit more risky. Because they drop into the inflation bracket there, okay, which means they're at risk from inflation. Because cash deposits, are the, currently in the bank, you might get half a percent return on your investment. okay, But... Inflation is riding somewhere around the 8% figure at the moment. That means technically year on year, you're losing 7.5%. Okay? Because inflation runs through the cost of buying bread, milk, and sugar is going up. But actually, what you have in the bank isn't going up because the cash deposit is not returning money. And then 
at the end of the, at the end of the scale is your small and large cap shares. So that's only in single shares in companies and what's working now. So that's your cryptos NFTs. That is probably the most risky things you can have because they're not regulated. Um, and the, the chance of actually losing all your money is very, very high. So yeah, so loss of capital wise, they're high on that. Same with single large cap share and small cap shares because if you're only one share in a company and that company folds, your money's gone. Yeah, so there's no diversification whatsoever, okay? So coming back to corporate bonds as well and government bonds, these will pay a set sort of return which is given by the government or by the company that you're investing in, but generally that amount isn't at the moment going to be the inflation. Therefore, once again, like cash, you're losing money. So you're actually at risk of inflationary loss. Now, the great companies of the world, everyone always panics and says, oh, they're shares and so on and so forth. Well, yes, they are. But we're talking about investing the great companies of the world in a globally diverse portfolio. So what we're saying, we're not just owning one Apple share or one Amazon share or one share in Monzo and so on and so forth. We're actually looking at buying tens of thousands of shares across lots of different sectors, okay? So lots of places around the world. So we're diversifying. Instead of just owning one, we're owning the great companies of the world. And people say, well, I'm scared about investing in shares. But my question always is, like, who would you bank with? Barclays, great companies of the world. Okay, so you're actually putting your money in the hand of Barclays, HSBC. When you go on holiday, who do you fly with? British Airways, maybe, EasyJet, great companies of the world. What car do you drive? Ford, Mercedes, BMW, great companies of the world. Every single day, we're investing in them. You go to Asda, you go to Morrison's, Sainsbury's, any of those companies, they're the great companies of the world. We're investing in those every day. So by investing in a globally diverse portfolio of the great companies of the world, which you do every single day, is actually one of the least riskiest things to do because it's such so diverse that they can then, they still be volatile, so they'll go up and down. That's where volatility, but volatility is our friend. Now, they will go up and down, but if you look at what history shows us, and actually over the long term, investing in the great companies of the world will show much better, much more positive return than corporate bonds, government bonds, cash deposits, and just holding single shares. And it takes a little bit of the risk off the table then as well. Physical property, owning bricks and mortar, so rental property, houses is tangible, you can touch it. If you look historically, properties double every 10 years in value. Okay. So you're owning something tangible. If you invest in a property company, it's not something tangible. And emerging markets are some of the growing companies around the world. So if we really look at risk and flip it on its head, if you're investing in a well-diversified portfolio of global equities, in our opinion, it's one of the least risky things you can kind of do.